Hello everyone, Astral Chemistry here. In one of our previous videos, we announced the beginning of a new series with the topic of radioactivity. Today, this is going to be the first video about radioactivity. The topic is going to be detecting radon-222. This is going to be a video divided into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to explain the theory behind the detection of radon-222. And in the practical part, we're going to execute the experiment. So let's get started. Now for an introduction, let me ask you a question. What do you think is the leading cause for lung cancer? So your answer is probably going to be smoking. And this is indeed correct. But what is the second leading cause for lung cancer? The second most leading cause for lung cancer is radon-222. So let me briefly explain what radon-222 is. Radon-222 is a radioactive novel gas. It is formed as part of the uranium decay chain. I think we can all agree that it is dangerous to inhale a gas that is itself radioactive and will then decay into products that are itself radioactive but not a gas anymore. There are studies that show that one out of 15 basements in the US has dangerous levels of radon-222 present. So let's take a brief look at this. Let me attempt to draw a house. So this should be the soil in which the house is built. Now radioactivity is present all around us in the air and in the soil. So they are going to be radioactive pieces of rock or other sediment in the earth that our houses are built in. So since radon-222 is part of the uranium decay chain, first radon-222 is going to be formed in the soil. Since it is a monoatomic gas, it is easy for it to diffuse through the soil and into our basements. Here it can concentrate in low spots because of its high density. Combined with too little ventilation dangerous levels of radon-222 can build up. So that was a brief introduction to what radon-222 is and why it is dangerous. We would urge you to refer to other materials here on YouTube and also on the internet for more information on this. We want to focus on the practical aspects now. So we have to do some preliminary considerations if we want to detect radon-222 in the air. Let us first talk about the decay chain in which radon-222 is formed. Radon-222 is formed by the decay of radium-226 via alpha emission. 
so an alpha particle is just a helium nucleus. So we can see that we have a positive charge on the on the right hand side of the equation but no charge on the left hand side. This means that initially the radon atom will be negatively charged. The decay of radium to radon has a half-life of 1600 years. Now, the, now radon 222 itself decays to polonium 218 with a half-life of only 3.8 days again with emission of an alpha particle. We can again assume that in the brief seconds in which the polonium-218 is formed, it is going to be negatively charged. So how can we use this information to detect radon-222 in the air? It is clear that some means of concentrating either the radon or its daughter nucleates has to take place. This can be achieved with electrostatic force. Let's consider the following. Let us take a balloon. Let's rub it against a piece of fabric, for example, a polyester cloth. This will separate some charges on the surface so that the balloon is going to be charged positively. We can now hang this balloon into the open air and the negatively charged daughter nucleates of our radon decaying are going to be attracted to the balloon. We can then simply compare the activity of the balloon before hanging it into the air and after hanging it in the air. This will provide us a general idea about the concentration of radon. Of course, this is no means a method for measuring the radon concentration quantitatively, but it will indeed prove that radon is present and it will give you a rough estimate about the amount of radon present. Now let's do this experiment in practice and see how it works. First, measure the activity of the uninflated balloon. Next, inflate the balloon and attach a string to it. Next, rub the inflated balloon against a cloth or a blanket made of polyester. Now attach it so that it can hang freely in the open air.